So of course there's a lot of new videos on the Mac Studio out there and not all of them dig into code and compilation and software development related topics. So that's what I wanted to dig into today. Now we did see a few charts up there floating around in some videos, specifically Firefox builds. And I was pretty amazed. For the most part, the new Intel i9 12th generation, this is the 12,900KF right here, the desktop inside that box. And of course, this is the M1 Ultra. And for the most part, the Intel box is doing quite well against this thing. Of course, I'm not talking about power draw or anything like that. Of course, the Mac Studio uses a lot less power. But there is one test that I've seen charts on, and that's the Firefox build where the Mac Studio is two times faster, about two times faster than the new Intel machine. Could this be? So I decided to do this test myself and hopefully we'll learn something new about this. Or maybe the tests that other people have done confirm that the Mac Studio is actually better at building Firefox. Now I just wanna add that you're gonna get different results based on what you're building, what framework, what uh, software, uh, what are the underlying libraries that are being used and what target you're building for as well. That's very important. Excuse the messiness of my desktops here. I just wanted to show you real quick here. This is the Firefox uh, website where you can configure uh, or set up the build environment on your own and actually do the builds yourself. Here's how you build on Windows. Here's how you build on a Mac and how you build on Linux and so on. But what this doesn't tell you, not least right here, is that these are not cross compilations. In other words, when you're setting up to build on Windows, you're going to build four windows. When you're setting up to build on a Mac, you're going to build for a Mac. And since the targets are going to be different than the libraries required that are going to be involved in the build are going to be different. So it's not a hundred percent apples to apples. It's not going to be, but I want to build apples to apples, or at least as close as we can get to apples to apples and see how much more performance we can squeeze out of the Intel machine to see if we can come close to the numbers that the Mac Studio is showing in those initial reports. But first, I'm going to start off with doing my own initial test and seeing if it actually corresponds to what other people are showing. So I'm going to start off on the Mac here. And this right here is basically the steps. I already have Xcode installed, so I don't need to do that. Uh, I do have Homebrew installed. If you don't know how to do that stuff, I have a video how to install Homebrew. I don't have a video on how to install Xcode. Just go to the App Store and download it there if you're starting from scratch. But this is the step where I need to actually be involved with. So I'm going to follow these steps here. Install Mercurial. I don't have Mercurial. Basically, it's a way to store your code. So I'm going to run each one of these steps that are described here. And then I'm supposed to bootstrap my copy of the Firefox source code. So I'm going to copy this line of code, which fetches the bootstrap Python file and then executes it. Except I want to do this one at a time. I'm just going to get the copy of that program first. Okay, and there it is bootstrap.py. And then I'm going to run Python, actually Python three, because I have Python 2.7 here as well for my mobile development. That's another video. Okay, and this is going to take a while because it's a pretty large code base. So it's going to take a long time to download. Um, I'm going to do this on Windows while I wait for that. On Windows, the steps are pretty much the same, except they have this uh, Mozilla build, it looks like. And that's basically a little Linux shell inside Windows terminal. So you can have your own little Linux sized environment. All right, so I got these set up on both the Windows machine and my Mac machine. And the command to run this is mock. It's one of their execution utilities to do the build. And then we just give it the build command. Now I want you to pay attention to the folder name. That's Mozilla Unified. That's the default name that you get when you download the source code and set it up. So in that folder, it's going to be the build created for that system. So it's going to be Firefox for Windows on Windows and Firefox for Mac on Mac. And I'm also going to give this the time command so that we see the output, how long it takes. I'll do the same exact thing here on the Mac and let's go. I'd imagine that this is going to take a while. So I'll be back. Well, 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 <laughs> this is pretty much exactly what the charts in those other videos showed. It makes sense, right? Well, hold on a second. The Mac Studio number is this exact number. It's seven minutes and eight seconds. We're still waiting for the Intel machine to finish. And I don't know how long that's going to take, but I'm willing to guess that's going to be around the 13, 14 minute mark. Okay, folks, pretty close. Uh, we got seven minutes here on the Mac Studio, 13 minutes and 10 seconds over there on the Windows machine. So this kind of confirms those charts, but 
but we are targeting different platforms here. So how do we equalize this a little bit and make it more fair? Well, I can try and target Linux on both machines and see if I can build for Linux on both machines. Now, according to the documentation, what you have to do is actually create a configuration file called mozconfig and here I've created it. It's it can be a dot config or just config. And you have to add these lines to it. AC add options and you target um, architecture 64 on Linux. OK, if I run this now, it'll build, it'll retarget and build for Linux, supposedly. OK, I'm going to do the same thing on my Windows machine. Uh, before I do that, I have to call clobber and clobber will basically delete the object tree that was built. And we're ready to do this again. You're lucky you don't have to wait and sit here and watch this thing happen as it builds. It's going to be a while. I'll skip forward. though. Consider this a favor. OK, I'm skipping all this stuff for you. Oh, um, I got an error here. So uh, on Windows, it's not liking that uh, for some reason. And I think it'll require a little bit of digging into to really figure out what's going on over there. Of course, on Mac, it's building just fine. I'll let it finish to see how long that takes. But I got to figure out something else on Windows. OK, so I came up with an idea of what to do on Windows. One of the options you can do when you're setting this up through Bootstrap is you can pick whether you want to build a browser for desktop or build a browser for Android. And this is, I believe, the key here. So we're going to do this. I've created a WSL2 Ubuntu instance, which is surprisingly easy on Windows 11. Pretty cool. And I've given it all the memory that I can. So this is a 32 gig machine. I've given it 30 gigabytes of RAM. So it doesn't run out of that. And all the processors it can use. Now, this is WSL2. So it's running a really lightweight VM. But maybe when I build for Android, Firefox for Android on this machine, it'll be fast. I don't know. We'll see. Let's try it out. So I've done the exact same thing on this instance of Ubuntu. I've bootstrapped it to target Android, mobile Android. So I'm going to do time mock and build. All right. Now, this one is still working. I just want to out of curiosity to see how long it takes to build for Linux over here. And then I'll do the Android one here after that. But I'll kick this one off. Don't know how long it'll take. And there it goes. Now, while that one is running over there, I want to take a look at the CPU in the task manager. OK, OK. So it's not really taking up that much of the CPU. Oh, there it goes. There it goes up to 100% now. Well, it's got spikes. There it goes 100% and almost 400 watts being used. <laughs> That's crazy. I remember when I had a 375 watt power supply back in the day when I built my own machine. Yeah, that would have not worked. All right, the Mac is done with the Linux target, and that took six minutes and 34 seconds, which is actually shorter time than targeting Mac. Surprising. I'm going to clobber it and do the build again. This time it's going to target mobile Android and maybe maybe it'll catch up and beat the Windows machine. We'll see. I always like to race things on this channel. All right, let's see. OK, believe it or not, um, they finished at pretty much at the same time. So this one took six minutes and 30 seconds, the Mac Studio, and the Intel machine took 11 minutes and 39 seconds. And even though the Intel compilation was faster using WSL, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux, it wasn't as fast as the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra chip. So that kind of makes me wonder what would happen if I compile the same code on my M1 Max chip, which is my laptop right here. I've seen that the cores are being used. Pretty much all the cores are being used during this compilation on both systems. And if that's the case, the Mac Studio has an advantage. It's got 20 cores. The Intel machine has 14 cores, but the M1 Max has 10 cores. So if we do our calculation, it seems like the M1 Max should be two times longer than the Mac Studio. So let's find out. <sighs> OK, going to roll up my sleeves because it's pretty hot in here now. But I got an answer for you. And the MacBook Pro, the M1 Max chip, ran this in 12 minutes and 39 seconds. So not quite two times slower, but it's within the expected range. What's interesting is that it's not that much slower than this beast of a desktop machine. So yeah, these two were desktops. That's a laptop. Now, since I ran it on one laptop, it would be unfair to not run it on another laptop. So I ran it on this Linux machine machine, which is installed not through WSL. This is not Windows. This is Linux installed on this laptop. And this is a Ryzen 5900. Yeah, it's not the 12th generation Intel, but the real time on this was 22 minutes and six seconds for the same project. So a long time. I can't believe I just sat here for like 40 minutes building these things just to spend 
10 seconds talking about it. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate a thumbs up if you did, if this was informative. More tests to come, hit that like button and the subscribe button, which is right under there. And I'll see you next time.